Welcome to Next Level Greatness, the podcast. Okay, you guys, we are in full swing with enrollment for Money Magnet. And today I have a very special guest that I feel like I've been promising on and not on and off, but for a while. But, you know, I like to fly by the seat of my pants and we just haven't made it happen. But I know that you guys hear me talk about human design all the flipping time. And so my very special guest today is Jen Norlin, a human design expert. I'll let you, I'll I'll let her tell her own story, but I'm so, so happy to have you here. And you are also a money magnet, magnet graduate. So welcome to my podcast, Jen. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here. (laughs) <laughs> Me too. Okay. So you are an engineer turned human design expert. Just give us like a little bit of your backstory. Who are you? So I, um, yeah, I spent 23 years in corporate consulting engineering and um, I was in a place that I loved the people, you know, I was, I had a lot of responsibility and I just like, it just, there was nothing about it that was really satisfying to me anymore. And about that time where I started feeling like, ah, I don't know about this for the rest of my life or, you know, till I, till I um, retire and human design found me. And I think that's how it works, right? Like it, it finds us in exactly the right timing. And so um, I had been a part of a mastermind at the time where I was introduced to human design and I thought, I have to know more. I have to know more about this. So I actually became certified in human design. And it was almost exactly a year later when I left my corporate position, knowing that there was more for me, knowing that, you know, engineering was not where my gifts, which I really dove into deeply when I learned my human design, that's not where my gifts were best shared with the world. So I totally get it. And I agree about human design finding you because it found me. So before I ask you for a definition of what human design is, because I know that I always give a very much definition and I'm like, I don't know, but it's amazing. <laughs> Everyone should do it. Um, I, you, you became a customer of mine through body formerly called beach body. And I happened to click on one of your links on Instagram I happen to take, I love quizzes, personality quizzes, things like that. And so I happen to take your test. And by the way, you guys, Jen's link is below in the show notes. So it's a free, uh, you can get your free chart with a report. It's amazing. And so I read it. And at first, it's some things resonated with me, but it said something about frustration, the cycle of frustration before you hit a breakthrough. And it said that I quit and I am not a quitter. And so I disconnected and I was like, that's definitely not me. I don't quit things. I, I I don't, so it's not me. And so I just left it there for like two or three months. And then I entered a deep a uh, cycle of frustration. And I was like, wait, didn't this human design thing talk about frustration before the breakthrough? And so I went back to my report. I just got goosebumps. I went back to my report, went back to you, and I actually booked a session with you. And it will have goosebumps. Like I have full body goosebumps remembering this. And it was like, you through him or yes, you or human design through you, whatever, gave me a language to how I was feeling. And it gave me permission to be who I know that I am here to be. Because one of the things that you remember that I told you was, I feel like I'm wise. I'm 48. And I feel like I'm a very wise person, but that sounds like almost pompous to me, you know, like, hey, I'm wise. I'm like, I don't know, shouldn't I have like a beard and be wise or something or like very long, you know, gray hair and be 90 years old to be wise. And do you remember what you said to me? Or not exactly, Um, but 
where did that come from? Like the wisdom part? So, well, in, in your, it, it shows up in your chart and mm-hmm. you like, you're here to share your experiences and, and the things that you have integrated in your life. That is part of your purpose. And, um, and that comes out very, very clearly in your chart in a lot of different ways. I remember talking about that when we, when we had your session, like there are so many different areas in your chart where that comes out that you are here to share that wisdom and to lead and guide people and be that role model. And that's, you know, that, that the frustration that you felt came at a time when you were experiencing this transition. And oftentimes we, we feel a transition and without seeing what the outcome is going to be, sometimes we don't know what to do with that. And I think that's one thing that human design can help us with is, is to go through those transitions in a way that serves, that serves us. Yeah. You know, I've seen this several times over the past few weeks, people posting on Facebook that either they've gone through a midlife crisis or they call it a midlife crisis as if it were a bad thing, but I, or, and some people, I think it, maybe it leads to depression for them because I believe that they believe that they still have to, they have to continue walking the same path as they always have. And so I love what you're saying because the reason they feel like it's a crisis and it might be a crisis, but a crisis signals that it's time to change but they think that something's wrong because what used to satisfy them and what used to work doesn't work anymore. And that's exactly where I found myself. And human design just like validated my feelings, but also, like I've already said, it gave me permission to just step into the unknown and be who I am. So with that, what is a human design? Like, can you define human design for us? So the short answer, I mean, and you know how many different levels you can dive into with human design. You can go very, very, very deep. Um, human design is how you experience the world energetically. Like everything that we do, everything that we experience, every situation that we step into is an energetic experience. And when we understand our human design, we can understand how we experience the world. And it can start to clarify some things. Why do we have patterns or behaviors that we do that maybe we repeat over and over? Or, um, you know, why do we experience emotions in one way with one person and in a different way with with someone else? Um, Why can we step into a room sometimes and and have this sense of like, it's either the, a really great place for us to be, or we really shouldn't be there. And so it's how we experience the world energetically and that definition for us uniquely. So, yes. And I, I think that we're going to get to that a little bit later, how we respond. I have to tell you that that part of my human design chart of how I respond in my body, whether something's a yes or no, has been the biggest, biggest gift. So when I did my human design reading with you, I I was, I was, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know the moment that it happened. It was just like, oh my gosh. Okay. So that was maybe last year around March. I think it was March 13th. And then that sounds right. Yes. And then maybe seven days later or so, I was going to wash my car. I had things to take care of, still feeling that frustration of like, what's my next step? I knew that I wanted to teach online courses, but I thought that what I wanted to teach was something about like helping people through burnout. And, but it just didn't feel right. So that's already like a sign, right? If something doesn't feel right. And so I was at the gas station and I opened up uh, a group. I was taking a course on manifestation, which didn't hit the spot for me. I don't know if I told you that it felt very encyclopedic for me. It wasn't like spiritual enough for me. 
And however, there was good in that because I opened up the, the group uh, on Facebook and there was a woman who asked, for, all, for those of you who are high money magnets, how can you tell me about the process? And I lit up, like it was like someone just freaking, like even right now, like I have goosebumps, right? Like it was like, I, I set my, my soul, my gut, I really felt, I'm feeling it right now, this very second. And so the way that it feels when I know that I'm connected to like source and like I'm on is that I get goosebumps. So I get goosebumps a lot whenever, whenever I'm like turned on to life. And then it's like, things just light up. I can't explain it. And I said, I'm a high money magnet. I know how to make money. I know how to teach it. And within 10 minutes, I think I didn't even have a sales page. I didn't create a sales page. I went live and I said, this is it. This is my next course. It's going to be called become a high money magnet. Now it's just money magnet. And I had 17 people sign up like, boom, like it was, it was incredible. And you were one of those 17 people. So that was an example of me responding as a generator and that all year long. So since last March, 2022, up until now, I trust that feeling. So my husband, we're just looking at different houses right now. And my husband showed me a picture and he's like, oh, babe, this house is so beautiful. And I looked at it and I said, no, it wasn't because I was being, you know, not open. It was like my body said no. And then I said that because I've gotten him into human design too. And I <laughs> said, babe, no, my body says no. And then he showed me another house. I was like, ooh. So that's one thing that I've learned. And I... I just, I, I, I can't credit you enough for that. So, you know what, let's get into it. Let's actually get okay. into that and we'll talk about money magnet afterwards and your okay. experience. Um, I know we don't have time to talk about the, there are five types. Yes. Okay. I'm energy types. Yes. So what are the two most common energies and how do people know whether something's a yes or a no for them? And then if we don't get to your, first of all, you can go, as I said, to the link below to find out what your energy type is, your human design type, what it, whatever you call it. Um, and then you can, you, you know, you can, you can get that for free and then you can dive into that. But because of time, let's talk about the two most common types. Okay. So the two, Two most common are generators and manifesting generators. That's about 70% of the population are made up of those two types. And there are similarities between the two. Um, and then there are some other things that are very, very different. But the thing that is one of the things that is common to those two types um, is that how do you best make decisions? And that feeling that you talked about um, when, when, Siggy showed you the picture of the house and it was a no, um, that is from your sacral. So we have, we have different energy centers in our body. I won't get, get into what all those are, but what defines a generator and a manifesting generator is a defined sacral. So you have this life force energy always available to you. It's very consistent for you. And when you lean into that, when you begin to trust that, which you have very much, um, that's what you get. It's a, it's either an immediate yes or an immediate no. And that's your truth. That is your truth. Um, that, you know, there are other things that can, that can kind of guide that for you. Your emotional solar plexus is part of it as well. Um, but it's, it's really asking yourself yes or no questions so that you can you can find that sacral immediate answer that you can feel. You can literally feel it in your body. That's your truth. And that's one of the things that that you have learned and that you have really learned to lean into. And you have seen the evidence. I've, I've watched you. I've watched you since last March. You've seen the evidence of when you listen to that, they, that's when you have the best outcome of whatever that decision is. Can you give us absolutely and and the other Jen, Jen Greta? So she's really blossoming since Money Magnet. And she we were we were texting back and forth, and she was saying that 
what she was describing was her responding in the same way to her sacral being lit up or no. And I said, Jen, this is what's happening. And she's like, oh my God, I, I understood it when I, I thought I understood it, but now I understand it. So it's almost like when you first learn about human design, it's like, because it's such a different language, right? We're not, we're so out of touch. We become conditioned to be so out of touch with our body that at first it's not obvious and now it's obvious and she experienced the same thing. Um, can you give us an example of you? Your, what, what is your uh, energy type? So I'm a generator also. Yeah. How do you respond? And like, what's an example of something that's a yes or no for you? Um, for me, it's, well, again, it's really leaning into that. So um, when it's a, when I have someone who asked me a yes or no question, I had a, a cousin of mine who um, sent me a message the other day and his daughter is wanting to move to Colorado. Things are, you know, her whole life is changing. And it, he asked me, he said, you know, I like, I know this is a big ask but is it possible that she, that she could stay with you for a while while she's figuring this out? And it was an immediate, absolutely. Like there was no doubt in my, in any part of my being. And, um, and it's just that like, when you, when you trust that, that, and that's the hardest part, right. Is trusting that yes or that no. Um, other times and you and I have talked about this, like, going out, you and I have both our six, two profiles and that's, that's something different, but we need time alone. We need time to reset and just to be, to be alone, to be out of society and out of, um, other people's energy. And we're designed to be that way. And so there have been things that I love to do, um, whether it's to go meet a girlfriend for lunch or to go to a yoga class. And I wake up that day and I go, this is not a hell yes for me. And, and I go, yeah, but I should, then I get into my, into my mind, into my head and I go, yeah, well, I should do this. Or I said, I would do this. And if I push through and I do it, I, I usually get to the other side of it and I'm like, oh God, I wish I would have stayed home. Um, but when I listen to that, what, even when it's a no, that is what is best for whatever is happening in my life. So it's just learning to trust that. I love that you said that. And actually, yes, we have talked a lot about that because um, I feel that I'm not a very social person in the 3D world, as you know, and one of the things I've said to you that the more I step into my, my sixth line, which is my, my role model role or line, um, I become more and more of a hermit, but also, and I've been very open in my podcast that my energy is very limited. And so I have to choose very wisely what I can give my energy to, because if I say yes to everything and everyone then I have, I have nothing. I have an empty cup, but it is. That's why we're all burned out and stressed out. And <laughs> because we're, because we don't tend to listen to that. Yes. And so one of the, the, the really, the most difficult things for me is I, I do have a few friends that want to see me even just go for a walk. And if I'm in my head, I'm like, well, if I'm a good friend, I'm going to go for a walk. But if I listen to my body and, and my sacral, and it's like, do you actually want to go on a walk and talk? No, I don't. I want to be alone. And that's really, really difficult in a world where it's almost like we're forced to be social or, yeah, there are all these norms of how we should be. And now I'm honoring that. And I actually sent a friend a message like, listen, you know, my energy is very limited and I'm just in a hermit period. And this is what it is. I, I love you, but I might have to be that friend that you see like once a year. And so, and I told my husband about it and he's like, babe, you don't know any, you're almost 50 years old. You don't owe anyone any explanations. And I said, you're right. But it was like, it allowed me that like, I'm not a bad friend. I guess, you know, I'm not that evolved, right? Because I, it just allowed me it gave me the permission to just be myself, but I have to say, it's not, it's not always easy. And in a work environment, for example, 
this is what burned me out where I would do a million Zoom calls and there are all these team co- calls on my, in my network marketing business and I refuse to do that. And this is where the crisis came for, from for me when, when you and I started talking a, over a year ago that the old system of doing things didn't work out, didn't work for me. It was very successful, but it didn't work for me. And so I was in that in-between stage of like, okay, everyone's still really hustling, doing all these calls and all this stuff. And I'm not willing to do that. And so I needed a full year to really just get in my body and decide like, what would feel good for me? And how would it look like for me to to, to run this business and thrive? And now I'm doing it. And this is how I'm also building my, my courses, my coaching. It's by listening to my body. And I, I just, I really don't know if I would have gotten here. Definitely, who knows, right? Maybe I would have gotten to this point, but I absolutely believe that human design helped me with that one thing of like listening to my body, what feels good, because now I know what it feels like to be in alignment, not be in alignment. And human design is just such a wonderful guide. So I, I love you forever, Jen. <laughs> love you too. <laughs> yeah. And I love, and I love telling my students about you and actually any, anyone and everyone, you know, I always, I feel like I should have your link just in my notes. Cause I'm always sending them to you. And um, <laughs> because, because I love, um, you know, you have choices. So anyone listening, you have choices, you can go to anyone you want. But one of the reasons that I love you in particular is because of your wisdom. I mean, you're around my age, I think a year older. And I just, I love that. I love that you're, you're wise and you've lived and, and you're kind and you're open. And so, yeah, this is a declaration of love. (laughs) Okay. Let's talk about money magnet. Um, Okay. What, what made you say yes? There we go. What made you say yes? Um, well, I, 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 it was the, uh, full embodiment that I saw in you, like, and, and, and we hear this all the time, like surround yourself with people who have done the things that you want to do or go where you want to go. And, um, I have followed you for many, many, many years. Um, I was actually originally with Beachbody like 13 years ago. My coach left and that was why I contacted you because I had followed you for so long. Um, I loved how you operated in your business, respected and honored your own energy and your body with what was going on, you know, from a health perspective. I know you're very open about that. And um and it was just again leaning into that sacral like it was a it was a yes it was an an immediate yes for me because i know you're so embodied in like creating the life because of where you came from and that like you have created this and you know that um and to be able to share that and to teach that and to know that that is something that you're here to do like you knew that long before you transitioned and also started your coaching business you you knew that long long before and so it was just an immediate yes for me um because because I knew that I was stepping in with you to to guide and lead the way and you had done that you had done what I wanted what I wanted to create in my life. That's so beautiful, Jen. What does it mean to be embodied? Because I feel like a lot of my listeners are um, very intelligent women like you, (laughs) very intelligent women, but they're not into the healing spiritual world. They're just like dipping in their toes. So I feel like embodiment is a, is a, is a a word, a vocabulary um, word. Yeah. A word that people are not really familiar with. They might know the definition, but what does that mean to be embodied? So for me, and I think about this, like, you know, personal development is really big in, um, in the network marketing companies and kind of in that arena, which is where my journey started was, was with personal development. And I think embodiment is like, you can read all of the books in the world. You can go to, you know, all of the conferences and, and, and you can get information, 
But until you actually integrate that into your own life, into your own decisions, into your own how you do things, that's where the embodiment comes from. You, you take those things that you learn, you take those, the, the, the wisdom of, you know, the experiences that you've had in life and you extract what, what was meant for you in that lesson? Like, why did I go through this? What was it trying to teach me? And I never understood that. Like I did all the personal development in the world. And until I actually dug deep and it's hard work, right? It, it's it's hard work to go back through a lot of this and the experiences that we have and totally disconnect from the victim mindset of why did this happen to me? And look at it from the standpoint of, okay, I've got all this personal development. I know, you know, these are what they say you're supposed to do, but how can I apply that to this situation and to, into what I have actually experienced in my life? And to me, that's where the embodiment comes from. That's where the wisdom comes from. And that comes by doing the work, you know, and I, I don't think it necessarily has to take a long time to do that, but it has to be very intentional. It has to be very, um, it, it, it has to be very personal and it has to be you, like, you first have to accept that this is my journey and it doesn't matter what anybody else is telling me I should do. It's what is right for me. And that's a very different mindset than just doing the personal development and thinking we have to do it a certain way that somebody tells us. That to me is embodiment. Yes, that's beautiful. And not to toot my own horn, but I feel like that's what we did in Money Magnet. If, if, can you speak to that? Do you, do you feel that that was true? That, and how, how was that true that we, we created a, I created the space for us in which to do that? So I think, you know, you talked about you, you have this wisdom that it's come through your experiences Mm -hmm. and what to me from, from being in money magnet, from my experience in working with you is you were able to, like, you were able to hold that space of being embodied. You, you've done it you know what it looks like, you know what it takes. Um, You also know it's a very individual journey. And so when you can hold the space and allow, and one of the things that I said to you before was that you were able to hold that space for women that were in all different places along their journey. You know, some of them were just starting to reconnect with their body and with listening to who they are here to be. Um, And then you had people who were further along in their journey and you were able to hold that space because you know, it's an individual and unique experience. And you didn't say, okay, here's your steps, A, B, C, and D. And as long as you follow these steps, here's where you're going to get, you understand that's not what the journey is. And when you can be a leader and hold that energy for people it really, really creates conditions where they can see those big transformations. And that was my experience with you because you were able to hold that, guide us and lead us through. And that's based on what you've experienced. You were able to share those things that you've been through, those stories that you used to tell yourself, the stories that even going back to when you were a child Mm -hmm. and how you transformed those into the life that you live now, into creating and building exactly the life that you want to live with, you know, with having a, a, a marriage that is amazing and a business that is amazing and now doing, you know, starting another business that is your, like your soul's calling um, even more so. I mean, I think that, that your, your uh, body business has been that too, and has led you here, but, but that's what I got from from money magnet is you were really able to hold that space and provide us with the tools so that we could do the work and you were there to guide and to lead and to show us. Oh, that's so beautiful. Yeah. 
And it's been such, for me, it's been such a pleasure because you're not new, you are not new to personal development and to inner work and you teach this stuff and you guide people. But for me to see you work through your own money stories and conditioning, and it was, it's just been so beautiful to see you blossom and, and just to continue this work that is the work of a lifetime. So yeah. And yeah. Yeah. So gosh, Jen, I, I'm so happy. I think I, I wanted to at first go into your money stories, but I just don't even think that we, that we need to. Um, I think I, I feel complete. I feel, I feel complete. And did I already say it? I'm going to repeat it and, and it'll serve as a reminder if I did already repeat it, that if you are going to jump into Money Magnet, we are getting started. The class starts March 5th or 6th, I have to look at my calendar, I don't have it in front of me, but I am including a two and a, almost two and a half hour session with Jen, it was so, I mean, it's such an amazing call, and that is my gift, our gift to you for um, enrolling in Money Magnet, It. I'm telling you, Human design has been such a game changer. And if you decide not to join us with Money Magnet in this round, you can still get your free chart below. And then you also do one-on-one sessions. You have tons of uh, opportunities for people to work with you. So I'll just go ahead and put the link below. And then that way people can, you really do enter a rabbit hole. It's like entering a whole... <laughs> It's entering a whole new world when they enter into your world. And then that's it. So I, Jen, I just want to thank you. I, I love you. And I love that we're so connected. I really feel connected to you. And I'm excited about Money Magnet. So, well, I'm, I'm excited that you're, you're continuing to do this work. I, you have absolutely changed my life as well. Um, I love to be able to spend time with you and feel that connection as well. So I'm excited for whoever des- decides to jump in with you. It will change your life. It'll, I mean, it's, it's incredible work. Yeah. Thank you. All right, everyone. We will, I will see you next week. Bye-bye.